the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, you were sent by the Father to bring good news to the poor. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you came to save us from sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you were sent to proclaim the grace and mercy of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I, too, will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all of the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please Him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense, according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seed that is so small 
but end up, ends up there. William Barclay has a beautiful reflection in the parable of the scattered seed. He says, no one has ever possessed the secret of life. No one has ever created anything in the full sense of the term, create. We can discover things, we can rearrange them, we can develop them, but create them, we cannot. We do not create the kingdom of God. The kingdom is God's. It is true that we can frustrate it and hinder it, or we can make a situation in the world where it is given the opportunity to give, to come more fully and speedily. But behind all things is God and the power and the will of God. In light of this, we have to honestly examine ourselves and ask, are we frustrating God's kingdom or helping it? Are we hindering or hastening its coming among us? When we reflect on the world in which we live today, one of the basic facts that we must consider is that the world gets stronger witness to the power of evil than it does to the presence and power of the kingdom. And what are those things in us and around us that hinder the realization of God's kingdom? Our faithfulness to God, to His will, because our unfaithfulness to God, to His will, because we are too preoccupied with our own plans. Our lack of commitment to live by the gospel values, because we are living the distorted values of the world. Our reluctance to use our gifts to serve the community because we are too busy with personal concerns. Our indifference towards the poor and the needy because we refuse to see as Christ sees them. Our failure to be good stewards of God's gift because we consider His gifts as our private property. Jesus says, the kingdom of God is at hand. It is here, within our reach, unfolding right before us. And how do we know? It is something abstract. It is something concrete. It is there in every kind and every affirming word given to the discouraged. It is there in every generous deed shared to the needy. It is there in every expression of compassion shown to the poor. It is there in every act of forgiveness extended to the sinner. And so brothers and sisters, we must always remember that every good deed expands God's kingdom and brings it to fruition and fulfillment. A single act of goodness, although performed in silence, brings God's kingdom nearer to realization. And so, all who work to resolve conflicts between nations, to foster greater understanding between religions, to reduce ravages of poverty, to promote justice and peace, to bring relief to the oppressed, to advance total human development, these are all our working to establish the kingdom of God. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, 
and the caveman, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. God is love, and love is of God. His kindness endures forever. His mercy hears the pleadings of His children. In Christ, who pleases God, we now present to Him our supplications. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church universal, that it would listen to the prophets, its midst, and proclaim the word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prophets in our world whose warnings are frequently thwarted, that they may be vindicated and their messages followed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church to be a place of welcome, hope, and strength for all who come together to worship, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who desperately need to see justice in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our faithful departed, that the purgative love of Jesus Christ will make them perfect in heaven as they look forward to the resurrection of the body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, hear the prayers of your children who find hope in the immensity of your love. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. May the mystery of this water and wine may come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Let us pray. O God, who in the offerings presented here, provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ the Lord, Lord. In Him, you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness. For though He was in the form of God, He emptied Himself, and by the blood of His cross, 
brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of together with Francis our Pope, Larry our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. By divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Keep you safe for eternal life. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, 
and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is celebrated. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.